Hi everyone and welcome to the part 3 on AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Series. So without further ado, let's get started with the questions. So the question number one is that a cloud user is storing sensitive customer data in an, in an Amazon S3 bucket. The user wants to protect the data from accidental deletion or overwriting. Which S3 feature should the user use to meet these requirements? And the options are S3 versioning, option B is S3 life cycle rules, option C is S3 bucket policies and option D is S3 server side encryption. So the correct option is S3 version. So S3 version versioning gives us the capability to recover any uh, type of data that is deleted or, or overwritten in S3, Amazon S3. Bucket. So, what is S3 versioning? S3 versioning is used to keep multiple versions of an object in one bucket so that you can restore objects that are accidentally deleted or overwritten. And let's see the visual. So, here we have the visual in this uh, bucket, we don't have the versioning enabled. So, there's only single version or single copy of the data. And if this data gets deleted then the data is lost forever we have no way to recover it while when we uh, enable the versioning feature then the data is stored with multiple versions so if the original data is deleted we can restore it through the another backup version so this is the concept of s3 versioning that uh, give us the capability to restore deleted or overwritten data. Question number two is that which AWS service provides the ability to manage infrastructure as code? And the options are AWS code deploy, option B is AWS code pipeline, option C is AWS cloud formation and option D is AWS direct connect. And the correct option is AWS cloud Formation and what is AWS Cloud Formation? It is an infrastructure as code service that allows you to easily model, provision, and manage AWS and third party resources. And this is the visual here we have the developer that is using the AWS CLI, and using this CLI, he can then uh, use the templates to provision resources and this whole setup is known as AWS Cloud Formation. Question number three is that an online streaming company needs to choose a purchasing option to run its Amazon EC2 instances for one year. The web traffic is consistent and any increase in traffic are predictable. The EC2 instances must be online and available without any disruption. Which EC2 instance purchasing option will meet these requirements most cost effectively? And the options are A. Spot instances, B. On demand instances, C. Reserve instances, and D. Spot fleet. And the correct option is the reserve instances. So the reserve instances can be used where you have consistent traffic and the traffic is predictable and you have a set of a specific duration set so the most cost effective option for the ec2 instance is then the reserve instance and what is the reserve instance it is the is uh, amazon ec2 reserve instance provides a significant discount this is a discount up of up to 72% compared to on demand pricing and provide a capacity reservation when used in a specific availability zone. So the most cost effective here, as we can see that it gives up to 70% discount as compared to the on demand instances. Question number four is that which AWS service or features allows a user to establish a dedicated network connection between a company's on-premise data center and the AWS cloud. And the options are A, Amazon Route 53, B, 
AWS Direct Connect, C, AWS VPN, and D, VPC Peering. And the correct option is AWS Direct Connect. So AWS Direct Connect gives us the option to connect our on-premise data center directly with the AWS Cloud. And here is the visual. So here uh, we can see that we have an on-premise data center and we want to connect it with the AWS Cloud through AWS region. So what we can use, we can use the AWS Direct Connect and this will then connect us to the seamless connectivity of AWS Cloud. Question number five is that which option is a physical location of the AWS global infrastructure? So the uh, keyword is physical location of AWS global infrastructure. And the options are A, AWS region, B, AWS data sync, C, AWS connect, and D, AWS organizations. And the correct option is AWS region. So what is an AWS region? So AWS region is basically a geographical area. And uh, in this AWS region, then we have multiple availability zone. Here we can see that in this specific uh, scenario, we have availability zone one, two, and three. And then inside each availability zone, we have multiple data centers. So we have three tier uh, redundancy. One is the uh, AWS region, then the availability zone, and then the data center. So let's suppose if we have a customer, and if he or she is connected to this specific availability zone and then to this data center. So if this data center fails, the customer is routed to the next data center in the same availability zone. And in that data center or the whole availability zone, then the customer can be routed to another availability zone. So that is the AWS region is basically a physical geographical region it means it is a physical uh, location in the aws cloud infrastructure question number six is that a company wants to protect its aws cloud information system and assets while performing risk assessment and mitigation tasks which pillar of the aws well architecture framework is supported by these goals and the options are a security, B reliability, C operational excellence, and D performance efficiency. And the correct option is the security. Since we are talking about the protection of information system, data, and assets, and also performing the risk assessment and mitigation, so these deals with the AWS security goal of AWS Well Architecture Framework. Question number seven is that what is the purpose of having an internet gateway within a VPC? And the options are A, to allow communication between the VPC and the internet. B, to create a VPN connection to the VPC. C, to impose bandwidth constraint on the internet traffic. And D, to load balance traffic from the internet across Amazon EC2 instances. And the correct option is that the VPC is used to allow communication between VPC and the internet. The internet gateway is used to allow communication between the VPC to the internet. This is the visual. So here we have a VPC, this is a specific VPC. And if we want to connect to the internet, then we must pass through the internet gateway so the internet gateway is used to connect the vpc to the internet question number eight is that a company has an aws account the company wants to audit its passwords and access keys access key rotation details for compliance purposes which aws service or tool will meet this requirement and the options are a aws artifact b iam credential report C, AWS Audit Manager, and D, IAM Access Analyzer. And the correct option is IAM, our Identity and Access Management Credential Report. So what is IAM Credential Report? IAM Credential Report can be used to view the status of all user credentials 
including password, access keys, and multi-factor authentication devices. Question number nine is that a company wants to receive a notification when a specific AWS cost threshold is reached. Which AWS services or tools can the company use to meet this requirement? And we have to choose two options. And the options are option A is AWS budgets. Option B is Amazon simple queue service, Amazon SQS. Option C is Amazon CloudWatch. And option D is Amazon Fast Explorer. And the correct options are AWS budgets and Amazon CloudWatch. So these two options can be used to set the cost threshold and get notification about when uh, uh, get notification when the specific uh, set cost threshold are reached so what are these the aws budget is a service that allows you to set custom cost and usage budgets for your aws resources you can configure a budget with a specific threshold and define actions such as sending notification when that threshold is reached Amazon Cloud Watch is a monitoring service that can be used to collect and track metrics, logs, and events from various AWS resources. It supports setting up alarm based on cost metrics, so you can create an alarm for a specific cost threshold and configure it to send notification when the threshold is reached. So these both, the AWS budget and Amazon Cloud Watch, these both can be used to uh, uh, can be used for the notification of cost threshold, but they both do it in different ways. Question number 10 is that what task or customer responsibility according to the AWS shared responsibility model? And we have to choose two options. And the options are A, classify company assets in AWS cloud. B, configure the AWS provided security group firewall. C patch or upgrade Amazon Dynamo DB and D select Amazon EC2 instances to run AWS Lambda on. And the correct options are the customer responsibility are number one to classify the company assets in the cloud and number two to configure the AWS provided security group firewall. So the classification of assets and the configuration of firewall is the responsibility of the customer. Here I have a visual that will give uh, further explanation of this idea, the shared responsibility model. So here we have the customer responsibility and then the AWS responsibility. The customer responsibility basically deals with the data and uh, the specific application and the identity and access management, such as the user keys, etc. And again, if you are talking about the infrastructure as a code platform, then the customer is also responsible for the operating system configuration, patching, the network configuration, and as we said in the question, the firewall configuration. And also the encryption of client side data and the integrity authentication again the server side encryption and so the file the server side encryption means the encryption of data the customer data and the file is also responsibility of the customer while the protection of data while it's uh, in the transit or on the move on the network is also the responsibility of the customer while the uh, cloud provider and in this case the aws responsibility is include if, uh, the foundation services such as the compute storage database and network the physical provision of all these resources is the responsibility of the cloud provider as well as the uh, broad or the uh, uh, broad level responsibilities which include the regions availability zone edge location data centers this whole infrastructure is of responsibility of the cloud provider or the aws so in a nutshell the Security of the cloud is the responsibility of the AWS or the cloud provider. Why security inside the cloud? What's inside? Data. Data is inside the cloud. It's the responsibility of the customer. So that's all for today. And uh, stay tuned for the next video and see you soon. Thank you and bye.